and welcome. My name is Jane Newton. I am the project officer for the Going All Out for Outreach Microcredential Program. Today, I'll be presenting the third and last webinar in the Going All Out for Outreach Microcredential series. Today's webinar will focus on the teaching microcredential. Don't be fooled by the name. It's not about giving you the skills to become a teacher in your organisation. Instead, the focus is on providing a supportive environment for students who come to your organisation to learn about the health industry and the occupations within it, and to gain practical knowledge and skills related to their chosen profession. The students may come on work experience from local schools, or they may come from visiting professionals or higher education institutions as part of their clinical experience or placement component of their course. They may also be student trainees within your organisation undertaking a health-related traineeship. Most of all, they are potentially your future workforce. So having an environment that's supportive of both their learning and their wellbeing is crucial for workforce attraction. This micro-credential will provide you and your staff with the skills and knowledge to confident, confidently support these students. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we work and live and recognising their continuing connection to the land, water and community. I'd like to pay respects to elders past and present and to future leaders. I also acknowledge that we may all be located in different places within the state of Queensland and on different lands to the one that I am on. So I respectfully acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which you, you work and live and recognise their kind of continuing connection to the land, water and community. So going all out for outreach, what is it? Going All Out for Outreach is a micro-credentialing program designed to address a range of rural and remote healthcare workforces issues in Queensland. Its overarching aim is to ensure health providers have the skills and knowledge they need to respond to the complexity of outreach work, provide relevant upskilling to the local workforce, and create a positive learning environment for students on work experience and clinical placement. For host facilities, the micro-credentials cover the essentials for effectively hosting a visiting workforce, a visiting health provider. Today's micro-credential will um, focus on the third aim above, which is around providing a positive learning environment. The program has four objectives. To enhance outreach health service delivery with a focus on local solutions. To ensure timely local responses in the rural and remote health workforce by delivering training to assist, to assist health providers to work top of scope and provide quality care by promoting multidisciplinary team-based models. To address the maldistribution of the health workforce in Queensland by increasing the attraction and retention of health professionals and assistants in rural and remote locations and to improve the efficiency of facilities hosting visiting outreach health providers. The first micro-credential addressed the first two, the objectives one and four. The second micro-credential addresses objectives two, and this one aims to address objective three. The program has been funded by the Department of Employment, Small Business and Training under their micro-credentialing program. It was designed and developed with oversight from an industry-based steering committee. Members of this committee included key stakeholders and experts in rural and remote health, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health, and the outreach model. Steering committee members provided input into the content and designs of the micro-credentials. And industry working groups were also set up for each micro-credential with members of these groups providing content ideas and regular feedback throughout their development. Checkup doesn't pretend to be the content expert in this area, which is why we um, had the steering committee and the working groups, because industry is the people that know what they need and what needs to be known within their industry. So that 
Each micro credential is actually being developed by industry for industry to meet industry needs. And I think it's really important to recognise that this is what they are designed to do. Why a teaching micro credential? So the teaching micro credential covers the key skills and knowledge needed to support a successful student placement, recognising that a positive placement experience could inspire a student to pursue a career in rural and remote setting. It was made clear to check up that many um, workplaces, um, prof um, health professionals, etc., were really struggling to attract and retain skilled workers throughout, particularly in rural and remote settings. Yeah. So one of the ways to do it is through being able to offer <coughs> work experience for local students. Excuse me for a minute. And to host students that are from universities or other health, other higher education or post-school education institutions, in the, in in when they are when they are trying to gain clinical experience. Um, so one of the things is that we that research has found is that. Um, a positive experience in a clinical placement will quite often lead to that student, once they have finished their course, coming back there to work and also building their skills so that when they come back to work with you, you already know what they're like. You have an idea of their fit with your organisation. So it is a win-win situation for both the, um, the student and for the potential employer. So who is it for? It's for individuals and organisations that host or would like to host students on work experience. So it is for um, health professionals, such as ophthalmo ophthalmologists, um, diabetic educators, uh, allied health professionals who might want to bring a student from a university who's undertaking a, um, um, education or degree in their area out into a rural and remote setting so that they get that experience. It's also for people within organisations and for organisations themselves that are a little bit unsure about whether they can take a student. They are unsure about what's required. They are unsure whether they have the time and the skills to be able to do it. They are unsure about what their commitment would be and in particular they're quite often unsure about what happens if something would go wrong so this uh, micro credential attempts to address all of those concerns so that when um, a student comes to your organization or when you take a student on board you feel confident about doing it so the learning outcomes, so the learning outcomes explain what people um, will get out of this course. So it, it the, after completing this micro-credential, the participants will be able to effectively prepare for and manage student placements, explain their local model of care and, and how it integrates into broader health services, and also how their local model of care has been designed to address community needs, not just the broader health services. So it's, it's about the fact that there's no one, one size fits all model of care. Um, create a supportive learning environment and effectively communicate with students and education institutions to support students on placement. So I'm now going to change screens and I'm going to take you to the, um, oops, Oh, not here it is. Oh. I'm sorry, I have a pop-up that keeps coming up and it annoys the daylights out of me. So this is the micro-credential. So when you actually go into the learning management system and sign up for to do this micro-credential, this is what it will look like. There's an explanation of why it's beneficial to have students, what it involves, just a very quick brief overview of what's involved. 
We then go into the local, into some of the learning um, outcomes. And we talk about what we're going to get at the end of the, the micro credential. So there's a digital badge, which the participant um, on completion will get. Uh, it's emailed to them. They can attach it to their LinkedIn profile. They can attach it to their CV. They can attach it to letters of application, um, expressions of interest for uh, higher level duties, all those sort of things. So it's actually, um, they also get a certificate, um, a digital certificate, which they can download and print. The idea of digital badges is that we all know digital you know, certificates, the paper documents can get lost, also emails can get lost and things like this. With the digital digital badge, I think each student gets a unique URL. That URL is there for their entire life. The digital badge is saved in the cloud. They can access it from anywhere at any time. They can share their unique URL with an employer or a prospective employer so that the employer can see what they've done. The digital bad li lists all the skills and knowledge that the student will have gained through the micro-credential and provides a, a much broader overview than just a simple certificate does of what the, stu the student has taken, undertaken. Each uh, micro-credential has a downloadable workbook such as this one. The workbook encourages reflective reflection on the um, through the activities that are there. So the student is encouraged to reflect on what they've learned um, from a practical point of view, reflect on their experience in certain cases, for example, as being a student on clinical placement is one way that they're encouraged to reflect. Um, they're encouraged to reflect on things like giving feedback or having received feedback. So these are all the activities that are in the workbook. As the student works through the workbook, they will, as they work through the course, they will um, find activities that will then direct them to their workbook to have a look at. The micro-credential starts with a bit about checkup and explains who we are and why we what we are and what we do. And where we're located. It, you'll have a few of these um, throughout the micro-credential. There are various different um, activities to engage in such as something like this, where we expand on under the headings and it provides further information. Um, so this is just looking at the workforce. And there are also pop-ups that come up like this, where you can actually click on the link here and it will take you to the website for further information. There are six modules in this particular uh, micro-credential. Uh, each one has its own set of learning um, outcomes. There's also a learning map, um, which shows where you are on your journey through the micro-credential. We start off by talking about the importance of student placements. And then we, we go on to talk a bit more about what it means to take a student placement. So in this case, we're doing a different, slightly different activity. So each one of these are cards that you can click on. You click on the tab, it'll bring up some more information. On what are the advantages of a clinical placement for, for three different people really. We have short videos, such as this one. Let me know if you can't see the video. Um, I think because it might be because it's in Articulate and not actually in the learning management system. 
I haven't got any. That's where's my volume? No, I have no volume here. So I'm hope, I'm sure you probably don't have volume either. Right. We also have, um, as another resource or way of um, sharing information, we also have flip cards such as this. In this case, uh, these are um, a series of questions uh, which a person that's going to take on a student should would be able to ask and think about and, um, you know, if you answer yes or you have answers to this, you know, you know who will provide supervision in the workforce. Is it going to be you? Is it going to be somebody else? Um, who in your your organisation would be a good buddy or support for the student while they're there? So that's not necessarily the person who's providing the supervision. It could be a um, peer or a fellow worker or um, some thing, something like that. So all of these are just little questions that help you think and focus on what you think would be um, needed to, to bring a student in if you've not done it before. Um, we then do a workbook activity. As I said, this will link back to your workbook. You take it down, you think about those questions, you um, create a checklist, you try and answer the questions and see how you go. And then at the end of it, end of the micro-credential, we ask you to go back to your, to your workbook and to think about, have your answers changed? Are there questions now that you didn't have when you first started? How many of your questions have you come up with an answer for and things like this? So it's again, it's about reflecting. Um, again, we have another quick um resource here that people can tap into to read a bit more about and get some more information. And these are, are settled. Um, lots of these are provided throughout. So it's just additional information that you can use and have. Can I move on? Yes. So the next one we're looking at is induction and we talk about you know how important it is for induction. Um, we have an onboarding micro-credential. So if you are thinking about taking on a student, you can ask that they, you can um, actually get them to do the onboarding micro-credential. It'll probably take them two and a half to three hours. Um, and then you can um, give them a guided tour of your premises if that's what you'd like to do. We have quizzes at the end of um, the modules. Not all modules have them, but quite a few do. So this gives you some ideas of, of um, and most of them are just uh, multiple choice active things. Some people will do exactly what I did there and start at the top and start clicking things rather than actually reading the whole question all the way through. Um, as you can see here, there's an 80% pass mark. If you don't get 80%, you have to click this button and take it again um, to be able to move on to the next section. So now we're moving into a new model, a new mo module, I should say. Again, you have the learning outcomes, you have the map. And then we talk about the key elements of a best practice learning environment. For this, we drew upon um, 
Victorian Department of Health Best Practice Clinical Learning Environments module model. They have six elements, as you can see here. However, we recognize that the model didn't take into account students that are work that are coming into um, a rural and remote environment, which is quite different to um, a metropolitan or um, yeah, a metropolitan environment. So for some students, if they're not um, from local schools, they may be from um, somewhere like Griffith University or Southern Queens, um, University of Southern Queensland, and they may be going on a rural and remote environment that has that is absolutely not at all like anything they've ever experienced before. So there are additional needs for those students. So we've actually created a model that includes that, this very important little um, one here. So that is an added thing that comes from creating, uh, from being in a rural and remote environment. We then talk about uh, organisational cultures. Um, again, the information is given in, in um, drop downs. We have links to further information. For example, this is this article about giving constructive constructive feedback. We also introduce the um, Australian government funded outreach programs, which are actually um, delivered under a, a specific set of service delivery standards, um, which are here. They cover everything from payments to, um, so these have to be met. And that gives you some sort of idea of the things that are in there. And we talk a bit about best practice um, and why it's important to have best practice in, in your organisation, best, best practice, clinical practice. Um, positive learning environments and what that means, what it means to have and support a student in a positive learning environment. And these are some of the things that, that you can do. You'll also need to work closely with the, um, in, the educational institution, whether it's a school, whether it's um, a vocational education and training provider, whether it's a university. So there's a number of different things. So there's a little video. Uh, which we put together for you. Again, I'm sorry there's no sound. I don't know why, but it's probably because I'm presenting from articulate rather than um, anything else. So I'm sorry you're not getting to understand what this is all about. We also cover communication and we have an infographic here with icons that give you information. And we talk about appropriate resources and facilities. Um, and one of the things that, that is not covered in the Victorian model is that 
appropriate resources also mean your staff. So we're talking about the members of staff that will be providing the supervision. Also, the members of staff that the student may be working alongside. Um, having access to their the appropriate um, equipment. So, for example, in a hospital setting, having access to things like um, blood pressure machines and um, temperature um, machines and things like this. So stuff like this. This is the seventh element that we've put into our model. This is the one around valuing the rural and remote experience. And we have a couple of videos here. So this one from um, UQ, where students talk about their, um, their rural and remote experiences and what it meant to them. We also have this video, which we very kindly got um, got the opportunity to interview um, people from Heart of Australia, which is a uh, travelling cardiology um, service that goes all through Queensland's rural and remote areas. And they talk about their program for um, students to bring them out and give them clinical experience. And we also talked to a um, trainee who actually did his clinical experience with with Heart of Australia and then decided to that he wanted to work for them. So I'm sorry you can't hear this. I'm really apologising for that. I'm hoping that we will be able to do it um, when this goes out. This one there is a quiz for. And again, we've got... Um, Sorry, I should be able to get this all right. Mm. That one's going to get me. I can't remember the answer. Hmm. I'm not going to be very good at this. Yeah, watch, I've just failed, guys. Okay, it's not going to let me go to the next one without doing it again. Right. Let's see. No, definitely going to have to take it again.
Now this time I pass, so I can move on. So this is the best practice clinical, best practice clinical practice at learning outcomes. So we're we're working our way through. What are we up to? Module three. This has actually got a bit more in it. Um, the main thing in this one is a focus on local models of care. And you'll see that we have actually featured four local models of care. Um, the primary healthcare, healthcare network, uh, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Health Council, um, Quake model of care, the IUE model of care, and the national or the NACHOs model of care. These are the four, pretty much the four primary models of care that we see in Queensland. So it, most um, times when a student goes on placement, they'll experience or come across one of these models of care. So the, the um, activity here is around the um, learner from the organisation, actually thinking about what model of care they're using in their organisation, um, thinking about uh, what, how the needs of the local community have influenced that model of care to adapt it for to meet the local needs. And then we go to talk about the next. Um, so each of these modules of, are, are aligned to the seven modules or the seven um, areas within the um, best practice learning environment or clinical experience uh, model that we've de developed. So um, we we sort of trying to to make sure that everybody gets to understand. And again, we've got a, an article or a video, I'm never too sure which it is. I think this one's an article um, that is a, a supplementary piece of information for people. And we focus it on the fact that um, you have to prepare for the student to come. So creating a positive learning environment actually starts before the student arrives. It's no use actually just thinking about it starting as soon as it arrives, as the student arrives. So there are a number of things that you may need to do. And um, and this is where we, we talk about that. And we actually give you a checklist that, you can use if you don't already have one developed. And these are some, again, it's as a series of use, developed as a series of questions that you need to answer um, or think about in preparing for a student. And we then talk about what would happen when the student's finished. Um, you have to think about how you communicate the student's performance back to the um, institution, the educational institution. There's some various things there like that. You may also need to report it within your own organisation, particularly if it's a student that um, is undertaking a university course and could potentially become an employee within your organisation. So there may be a number of different ways that your organisation does that. We also give you some tips on how to be a, stu a good supervisor, um, along with a video. Again, just some flip cards. And a workbook activity for that one. We have another, um, again, we're looking at communication and communication processes. We go into more detail than we did in the first one where we talked about communication. Uh, we have a, a, a short video. And 
and we have some different ways that you can communicate uh, from two different points of view, student and supervisor, host facility and community. And we give some tips and that's these here. So we might say prepare. So you think about what you want to say and the best way to say it. You might prepare key points in advance. You might anticipate questions and concerns that the student might write. Um, arise. So we go on and through all of that. So there are just some ideas, some thoughts around things so that you can be feel confident that you um, will be able to handle most situations. We also provide a, a resource that has some further information for people. And there's another workbook activity. Feedback is an important part of um, the communication process. Um, and so there's a short video, a little pop-up. Some um, notes on how to give feedback. Again, a workbook activity, some feedback tips, and then we have a, an activity. And this is very simple, this one. You just um, bring the cards over and put them on whichever pile you think might be correct. Didn't like me then. And then an important part of a student's placement is debriefing. Um, now, they will do a formal debrief usually with their um, clinical supervisor from the university or from the um, training facility, but they may also want to debrief if there's an incident or um, something that happens within the workplace, they may also want to debrief with you. So they might just want to talk through and go, you know, like when I was working with this particular patient, I didn't really feel comfortable. And so there's an opportunity for you then to sort of say, oh, really? Why? What was it that made you feel uncomfortable? And ask them to give you some feedback on that and help them uh, understand their feelings and their emotions in that situation and how and some strategy, how to develop some strategies to deal with it if it should come up again. So this is some of the things that, that we say, you know, they may actually have assessments that are due and they may ask you for some help with those too. So they might be asked to describe a situation in the workforce where something has happened, whether it was good or bad. Um, talk about, you know, how they uh, responded to it, what they felt about their response, um, what they thought could be could do better. So it's very open-ended. It's all about encouraging the student. So again, we have this um, infographic where you just click on the um, icons or on the arrow. Challenging solution uh, situations will come up in any environment. Um, so it's best to be prepared in some way. It's not you're going to be the first person that has to deal with them, um, with the challenging situation involving a student because you're the one who is actually supervising them. The supervisor could be anywhere else within the facility or they could be in a whole different facility depending on what the situation is. So, um, you know, you might have two students from one hospital, uh, from one university in your institution and they may be, 
other students in other towns in other institutions doing um, exactly the same thing. So sometimes you're going to be the first person to deal with it. So basically, um, there's a, we've got a little video that gives you some tips on how to deal with challenging situations. I'm going to screen when this came, thing comes up. My apologies for that coming up all the way through. So, um, oh, goodness, it's getting worse. Isn't it going to be that bad this today? Normally it's not. So there are the 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 main thing is to actually defuse the situation first off. Then um, it's very important just to refer this, refer the whole thing to the inst educational institution the students from, so that they can um, deal with it more appropriately. They actually all actually all of them have really good support services, and they can support you throughout. So conflict, again, similar thing. Um, we look at the conflict. And this is one where it can um, come up, particularly like in this sort of area where the conflict during a placement can come up. And usually it's miscommunication. So mismatched, unclear or unrealistic expectations. It's really important at the beginning of the placement, you and your student, set the ex your expectations of each other. Um, can think about your style of supervision. There's a whole range of different ways of doing it. And miscommunication or misunderstanding is a very, very common um, area of, of conflict. So again, we, su we suggest that you reach out to the student facilitator, facilitator or teacher as soon as possible when there's conflict, particularly if it's not just a simple mis misunderstanding. We have a quiz. I'm going to see if I can skip it. No. Sorry, guys. Hmm, I didn't do too well then. not going to allow me to move on until I get this right. And this could take a while. So basically, um, where am I up to? Module six, we're nearly finished.
Let's see if this works. No, not again. Okay, so the next um, module actually focuses on the rural and remote experience. Um, and it, it has a large focus on student health and wellbeing. It's, it lists the five areas of, of health and wellbeing. Um, so, and it gives you some tips on how you can support a student's health and wellbeing while on um, a clinical experience. The particular focus is on students who come from environments other than um, a rural or remote environment. Even though, although having said that, um, students who come from another rural or remote environment may also experience a lot of the same issues as students who, who come from a metropolitan area. Um, it also gives you tips on how you can support that student. And the support, is more of a pastoral type support. So you actually, it's not just about supporting them in the workplace, but it's also about ensuring that they feel integrated into the local community and they get to experience the lifestyle of the local community so that they are able to make informed decisions about their future. And some of those decisions might say, I really hate this and I don't think I could ever, ever work in a rural or remote environment. Um, and it won't matter how good you have made everything, it will be something that they'll go away saying, yes, it was a really good experience, but I did learn a lot about myself. And one of the things I learned about myself is that this is not for me. And there's nothing wrong with that. So that is something that, you know, don't feel that you're a failure because they they might go away doing that. You haven't, you've been very successful in what you're doing because you've actually enabled them to make an informed decision about their future and where they want to work. And that's really important. That was an important lesson I had to learn when I was doing clinical facilitating, that it was okay for people to say, you know what, I'm not really cut out to be a nurse. I think I'll go and try something else. It wasn't a failure on my part. It was them actually recognising and understanding that, that what they had in their, the image that they had in their mind was not realistic for what they or who they were. Um, one of the things that we do strongly recommend in here, and that's in the, the final um, part of Module 6, is understanding that when a student has um, issues that are related to, um, to wellbeing, it's important to reach out immediately. If you suspect that, talk to the clinical placement officer that has put that student in your, in your organisation. It's really important to have that close link with them and be able to talk to them and say, look, I'm sorry, I think this student's really struggling and it's beyond me. So it's recognising that it's beyond you to support them and giving, um, getting, reaching out to the professionals to come and help you. And it's about you getting the help that you need or the support you need because at the end of the day, the clinical, um, the university, the clinical placement facility that, want has put that student with you really wants this to be successful not only for the student but also for the for the host facility and so that having that really good strong communication between yourself and the host facility or the clinical placement officer from the host facility uh, from the university or the training organization or the school it's really important to have that close relationship because that can make a huge difference for all parties as to whether the, the placement is successful or not. And basically, um, the only thing we've got left, you have a final assessment. Um, and after that, 
completion of that final assessment, you will the student um, gets um, successful completion of that final assessment. The student will get a, a digital badge and a certificate emailed to them. Um, they will also be asked to undertake a survey um, saying, giving us feedback on what they got out of it and what else they thought would benefit they could benefit from. So that's basically it. I'm going to stop screen sharing for the moment and take you to the last slide in the presentation, which is here. And this link here will actually take you to where you can enroll in the micro-credential. And if you scan the um, QR code here, it will actually take you to the web page as well. So that will give you some more information on all three micro-credentials and any resources that we, we develop over the next uh, month or so that will go up there, including these webinars. All these webinars have been recorded and will be put up there so you can review them anytime you like. Whoops, I stopped screen sharing. My apologies, Roxy. Now I've got to find where I was screen sharing from. Must have been here. Here we go. Sorry about that. So this is so the final share this the final two slides give you information of where and, and links to where you can um easily um log in to undertake the um actual micro credential or where you can find um, for example, by scanning this QR code, you can actually go to the web page and there will be um, a copy of this webinar up there. This webinar will also be sent to you along with all the slides so that you're able to um, review it in your own time anytime you would like to and um, also share it with other people.